So if you love children's literature, if you love inspirational humans, you are in for a real treat. I am so excited to welcome one of my very favorite people back to this show. Um, if you want to learn more about her, I'm going to tell you to go back to um, podcast number one. But we have the one, the only, Vanessa Brantley Newton on with us today. And we're going to be talking about all things, including Shake It Off, her new book. We're going to talk about her PBS specials, and we're going to talk about the cool art classes she does online that provide so much inspiration as well. So if you are ready for a dose of inspiration, settle back and enjoy this episode of the Adventures in Learning podcast. Vanessa, welcome. I'm so glad to see you. I am so excited to see your beautiful face and your beautiful spirit just brightens up everything. So it is good to be here. Hi, everybody. And that's how I feel about you. So it's been, um, I think we talked this time last year or yes. a little bit after this about your books because you had nesting dolls coming out. Yeah. Um, how was the reception for nesting dolls? How are you finding you know, people received it? It was it was very well received, very well received. Um, you know, it's uh, colorism, even within our community has uh, long roots, unfortunately. And so uh, a lot of people said it touched home where they were concerned, you know, and, and them embracing themselves and the beauty of their melanated skin was so very, very important. And to send that message, message to children as well, that they need to embrace themselves. You know, if you're spending your time being somebody else, who's being you? I love that. That's one of my favorite yeah. Vanessa-isms. <laughs> And you have a brand new book that has just made it into the world, Shake It Off. Um, I'm going to do my own personal plug for this book right now. I read it. I loved it. The resilience, the idea of being able to pick yourself up and work your way out of difficult situations is just so beautiful. So, Vanessa, tell us a little bit about what led to writing this book. Oh, my gosh. When I was a little girl uh, and we attended church, there was this gospel quartet group called the Williams Brothers. And the Williams Brothers were the best storytellers in gospel, you know, as far as, you know, uh, Christendom was concerned. It was the Williams Brothers was going to always give you a story. And I remember when they came up with this story about this little goat and they got it from somewhere else as well. But uh, there's so many variations to the story. But as a child, when I would hear this story and they would always, you know, uh, um, in the very gospel way, shake it off and pack it under. And that would stay with me. It would just stay with me like, oh my gosh. And what do I need to shake off? What do I, what do I need to get rid of? And sometimes it was the mean things that people would say, uh, or my sister and I would have a fight. And we would have to make up and you got to shake that stuff off, you know, um, bad thoughts that come and want to invade your mind and your space and change the energy around you. You got to shake that stuff off and pack it under, you know, and as you do so, you find yourself rising above every single circumstances. It might not happen right then and there, but gradually you keep packing it under and getting over and those words, it was the words and the way they would say it. I would feel so encouraged after every, every time they sing it, I felt so encouraged afterwards that I had to do this book. I had to do the book. Yeah. And I just, I love this book. I know you don't happen to have your own copy at this point, yes. um, but is there All a favorite on. page, one that you would like to share with folks? Oh, yes. Um, there is a spot where she is climbing up on all of the dirt that has been thrown down into the well on top of her. And uh, she shakes this off. And it's so, I, you know, I'm trying to now uh, be more, how can I say, consistent in always having a blank page where there are no words. You get to tell the story the way you want. That is my favorite page of the book, the whole book. And if you get a copy, you will see there are words. I've collaged uh, words there sure around. There are. Yeah. 
And, uh, you know, a lot of librarians, I don't know that they will get this, but I hope that they will be able to listen to this podcast and get a better understanding of why did Vanessa put words on the ground? Because uh, words are very much like dirt. They can be very organic and help to grow things, or they can bury things. And words, sometimes parents... We say things to our children in that moment when they are very, you know, upsetting us and we say things and sometimes even saying, I'm sorry, doesn't take away the damage that's done. And all I could think about, Diane, was the words that were spoken over me um, from teachers, teachers. Oh, she's never going to get it. You're, you you know, um, I've even heard out of a teacher's mouth, she's dumb, literally. Mm -hmm. And those words and are like death sentences. It's like death sentences, but they're words. And if you allow them to be planted in you and for a time, it was planted in me. It was. I thought I was dumb. I'm, I'm a stupid girl. I'm a dumb girl. You know, because the adults have said it must be true, you know, because they're an adult. And you don't know the damage that you're doing to children when you say things like that to them. And it wasn't until I became an adult and begin to, yes, get some, some counseling. We need it. Yes, you know? we do. And I got the counseling and, you know, it was awesome to hear somebody say to me, you don't have to live up under this kind of stuff. And I was, I was surrounded by, I, I don't want to really put it out there, but I was surrounded by narcissists. People who were very much into themselves, didn't really care <laughs> If the kid made it, understood, whatever. And I think as I got older, Diane, I began to see the worth inside Vanessa. That's important. When you see what you bring to the table and when you begin to have a relationship with yourself, this is for adults and children, to take the moment to say in the morning, I love me. Stinky breath and all. Crazy <laughs> hair and all. You know? Ratty clothes and all. I love me and I'm getting better and better every single day. When you start saying little things like that to yourself, just little things, that is you packing it under and climbing up on top of every single word. When somebody says, oh, that dress is ugly or I don't like your hair, shake it off and pack and it pack under. Pack it under. And rise and keep rising until they can't ignore you. So, <laughs> well, and this sounds like metaphor for your career at this point. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, 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 that you would even go there. You are brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you, um, I have been through hell and back in my career from racism to classism to, uh, oh, she's dyslexic. She has synesthesia. She stutters. You know, uh, and 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 sometimes we're looking at, oh, well, it must have been the white people that did that. No, no, there are people that look just like me, and they felt comfortable enough to say those things to me. You know, and it's so funny, Diane, how I climbed up on those words because those same people are trying to come back now. Yep, which is the weirdest thing because I'm like, you didn't want me then. Why do you want me now? Just. Keep, because keep you are now the successful, <laughs> incredibly powerful little goat at the end of this. That's story. right. The That's one right. who is singing her own song in the yes. trees. Yes, yes, absolutely. And it's it, and it's not just a, you know, I'm angry with them. Not angry with them. I don't have time to be angry with anybody. And anger tends to not just move me in the right direction all the time. So I let it go so that I can pack it under and move forward and move up. The, you know, I had a mentor that told me back in the day, Diane, that uh, mediocrity is around the bottom. But when you start thriving and growing, that's at the top. The air is thin and not too many people can deal with that. And so they, you know, they would rather stay down in mediocrity. I don't want mediocrity. 
not for myself, not for my readers, not for my parents who read to their children. It, it we, we are living in some times right now where there is just ugliness all around us. Yep. All day, every day. And what I want to teach you, because because I know a lot of people are like, oh, I don't believe in that manifestation stuff or whatever. It believes in you, whether you believe it or not. It believes in you. So if you say, hey, I'm dumb, I'm stupid. Oh, that was so stupid of me. I don't know why I did, you know. If, if, even if you say that, make sure your response after you say that is, but I'm not going to do it again. I'll be smarter next time. Yep. I'll learn from this and move on. I'll learn from, I'll learn and I'll grow from this. Exactly. And so it's what I want to give to children who are being bullied in school, who are being overlooked, you know, uh, that if Miss Vanessa can make it, you can make it too. I just got back from Shenandoah at a book conference and I got to meet up with a, a beautiful young man. His name is Lucky Diaz okay. and he is a fantastic singer. He's a, he's amazing uh, and has done books with my uh, friend, Micah Player as well. And the two of them together are like ice cone and ice cream. They are, they are amazing. Wow. And I got to be with them and we were in the room talking to parents and children and people just think, you know, oh, well, Vanessa's going to get up. She's just going to talk to the kids. Never. No. Because I'm trying to give my adults do-overs. Yep. You deserve a do-over. Life has, I'm, I'm pretty sure, even if you've had the perfect life where you had parents and was loved and everything else I'm, I'm pretty sure there was a day when you felt like what in the world is going on and what I wanted to leave with the parents is I see you I see you working hard I see you coming home from work and you're just exhausted you don't even want to talk to your spouse let alone your kids you're just exhausted and I just need a moment haven't had a vacation in over three four five years you know, worried about your mortgage, worried about is my kid going to make it or whatever. And and that's the that's the thing right there. He's not getting it as fast as everybody else. Well, she's a lot smaller than everybody else, her size and her age. She should mm -hmm. be a, a little, he should be a, a lot further along than he is. And you put those burdens on yourself and then you put them, you put the fear of those burdens on you to your children. And they pick up on it. And they pick up on it. It's a vibe. It really it's, is. It, it's a vibration. And if you're living under that vibration, that's what you, you're attracting to yourself. So you're, you, you're attracting all the Ds, all the Fs, all the fear, all the anxiety around everything that they do. How do I change that though? I mean, I know you, you, you're calling it out, but how do I change it? You start with you. What are you saying about yourself in your own head? I'm a failure because you didn't get the promotion. You're not a failure because you didn't get a promotion. You worked hard and they may have passed you over. But you can talk to the universe and tell the universe what you want. You know, or better yet, of course I got. It. You know, that's that's another law. It's called the law of assumption. But it is, it is a law and it works, y'all. I, I don't care if you're a Christian. I don't care if you're a Jew. I don't care if you're you're, you're Muslim, uh, uh um uh, you know, what whatever. It's true. It's yeah. true. What you think about, you bring about. And what you talk about, you walk it out. So if all you're doing is talking about gossip and all the horrible things that are happening in the world, you, you, you're attracting. We're, we're, we're magnets. So you're attracting that particular thing. You can change that energy anytime you want. Put on your favorite record. Dance it find, out. Find, find your favorite song. And just groove to it. I don't care if it's Smokey Robinson or if it's Queen. Put it on and just rock to it and have a moment where you're just happy and content. Oh, absolutely. And say to yourself, little tiny things like, you know what? Today is going to be a great day. It's going to be a real good day. And watch what happens. It's amazing. I got to tell you, if you had told me when I was 16 that Prince was going to be my go-to for days like that, I don't know that I would have believed you, but it 100% is. I have had so many dance outs oh with Prince. Goodness. I love it. Diane, you and I could spend a whole <laughs> lot of time together. My husband is one of the biggest Prince fans on the planet. He loves Prince. Oh my gosh. Prince, Prince will never be dead in his heart. He's an ancestor. Absolutely. You know? I get that. 
but but it's it's you know listening to some of those things and one of the one of the songs that he did was um positivity yes have you had your plus sign today that that song stays with me when i'm trying to get a vibe i love it this is a vibe so you and you know, i definitely and as you were talking i'm realizing you know, so much of what you're saying about talking to the parents when we work with kids we're really reaching out to these grown-ups and yes like when i'm doing workshops for kids uh, because i've been doing a lot of steam workshops with children where i connect picture books and the um hands-on learning what i'm really doing is modeling for those teachers at the same time and hoping that they're watching the way i'm engaging with the kids that they're seeing oh there are these possibilities and the cool thing is i go in with no assumptions because i'm you know in there for a couple of hours i don't know these children Uh, you know so to me every child is that rock star they all have that potential because i'm not coming in with preconceived notions absolutely and they rise to that because i'm treating them with fresh eyes they're yes able you are to do the things and so the best compliment i ever heard was this spring there were two teachers talking in the hall and i heard one say to the other that was amazing i had forgotten that so and so could do that because i've been so caught up in calling them out for all the things that they can't do and i thought mm-hmm. mission accomplished <laughs> but that's, that's why we love do. you yeah that's what, that, that's why we love you and we need more of you because it's 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 getting dreary I just shared your books with a woman who is going to be on the podcast um, shortly. Her name is Dr. Tiana Velasquez Smith, and she has the most amazing literacy um, tutoring service. Um, She works with kids who are neurodivergent, and she's teaching reading to pre-K through two. And it's largely, um, you know, kids who maybe have been socioeconomically disadvantaged, um, black and brown children, um, neurodivergent kids. And she teaches it in playful ways. And she goes with their interests and their passions. She's just amazing. And we were talking about, you know, I introduced her to your um, your books because I was like, ooh, you know, Nesting Dolls or Becoming Vanessa or this. And she's like, yeah. I've never heard of this author. And she was immediately ordering your books. But she goes, that to me is special because she's like, you know, it used to be that I only found one or two books that featured people who looked like me. And she goes, now there are authors I don't know. And when I run into an author I don't know, I jump up and down for joy because that's a new discovery. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And she's right. She's right. We 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 need to see more people of color in in publishing, but not just in the writing process, also in the editing. Absolutely. As well. To to allow certain books to be told not just to brown children, but to children. Yes. You know, when 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 you don't tell a child, um, you know, I know that we have this whole thing about we don't want white children to feel bad about slavery because of whatever. But it's a part of their history, it is. just like it's a part of that that, that black child's history. And it has it's to be part... acknowledged for the pain to heal. There you go. There you, you go. Know, I've been, um, this summer, I'm working with a couple of UVA classes on children's literature. And we're talking a lot this week about um, Dr. Sims Bishop and Windows and Mirrors. Oh, yes, and, yes. Um, it's been so much fun for me to sort of see this evolution in my students thinking, because these are yes. all teachers. These are people who are seasoned, who are going for master's in reading or their um, library um, certifications. And there have been some who've gone, you know, I've always thought of it as you're giving kids mirrors. She's like, I never thought about the windows part. The fact that wow, we need to be able to see each other's stories to be able to move forward and to advance. And I was like, okay, we're making progress. It may be tiny progress, but- It's so important because it's so important. I'm reading it's Black so Boy Joy right now, and I gotta tell you, that book has done my heart so much. Let me good. tell you, oh, that you even mentioned that because I got to meet um, uh, what is her name? Uh, it's it slips me right now. Not Marisol. It's um, Mallory, Ma- Kwame's wife. I got okay. to meet Mallory. You got to the meet the first his time wife. at the PB. Yeah, I got to meet her at the PBMS uh, Summit, 
And uh, we hugged and we spent some time together and getting to know her. And Kwame wasn't able to make it. He had other things he was working on. But I told her that black boy, Joy, is something so fantastic. It is a gift. It's it really, really, really such is a gift. A gift. It, it, it's such a gift. And I'm like, this is, you tell Kwame. I told her, you make sure you tell Kwame he did that. Absolutely. And I'm hoping to get him on the podcast. I met him at a conference this spring and we talked and I'm really hoping he'll come on and talk about that book and his Tristan Strong series and all of the, just the amazing things he's done because he's done a lot of amazing things. Absolutely. He really has. So you know how to pick them girl. Hey, I, I'm a good reader and I love books. Well, let's talk about PBS. What's going on with PBS? So uh, about six years ago, my agent um, told me, she said, Vanessa, she said, I got a feeling you're not going to be doing books your whole life. She said, you have such a personality and you care about people. She said, you really love children. She said, and there's a whole bunch of artists out here and illustrators who do children's books, writers even, who don't like children. Yep. Which is crazy to me. How can yeah. you write for kids and not like It's them? crazy. But you know what? They're not writing for children. They're writing for themselves. They're writing for their inner child to heal. They're writing for their inner child and how to get that one healed. So uh, she said, I want to put a sizzle reel together. So she put a sizzle reel together and she sent it to um, a fabulous uh, uh, producer named Tone Time. And Tone uh, has been working in Hollywood for, for a number of years. Uh, actually, I think his brother is an actor, famous actor as well. But uh, Tone, uh, amazingly, Diane, I, I get to meet Tone for the first time in California and I'm sitting across the table going, this man looks like somebody I know. And I was like, it just, I couldn't, I couldn't stop staring at him. And I'm looking into his eyes and I'm going, reminds me of, oh my gosh. It's, oh my goodness. It's it, it it's the it, it's the character from story uh, um 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 what is it oh my god Woody from Toy Story Tom he Hanks was the, he was the model for it. was he really he was the doll he was the doll model and the model for the character that's amazing for, that you I would was put like, those two things together yes right and I'm sitting there going oh my god and he smiles and he looks just like Woody that's I mean hilarious. I was like this is amazing this is amazing I love it was, that it's one of the most amazing moments I've ever he said yes I was the model for the Woody doll and for the 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 um movie and I was like this is amazing <laughs> this is that's, amazing what a crazy job Yes, I know, right? So he took he took the um sizzle reel and he said, you know what? You really got something here. And so they do something called the Bible. They write the Bible for the show. And so he writes the Bible for the show. And uh I'm so blown away by how this man knows me without really knowing me. You know, and he sat there and he says, You really love children, don't you? I said, I love and adore children. And he said, well, what about adults? I said, I'm always trying to give adults a do-over because you deserve one. You deserve one. Yep. If you didn't get picked for the baseball team, I got you. Come over. You know, yep. uh, they, they didn't let you be in the club. I got you. You know, so so it's it's watching them put this whole thing together. So the show is, is going to be a live situation where uh, it's going to appear on what? I think YouTube, I think. Okay. And it's going to come into the cracks. It's going to come in between things like Arthur and uh, oh, Sesame God. Street or Bluey. And so it'll be a short seven- that fills that time yeah. between. Exactly. So it's going to be a seven minute short. And uh, I will come on and we will do art together. Oh, that's what God. That's what I'm really excited about. We'll do art and we're going to do music together. So I'm very excited. And PBS is even more excited, I think, than I am. And when is this going to air? Well, we're working on the pilot right now. So uh, we've casted uh, for several children to come on as the show is for children between the ages of three to eight. My favorite the, people. Yes, my favorite people. Yes. So I'm excited for it. Um, 
Even got to see Kwame Alexander. Nice. And yes, and he's got a great show that's getting ready to come out on PBS. And that's called uh, Acoustic Rooster, one of his books. I remember that book. Oh, how yes. fun. He's going to be teaching children jazz. And I'm so excited that's about cool. this program. So we learned about a whole lot of different things that are happening, but uh, Tone and Lori, my, my agent Lori, really worked on this show. The show is called It's Me, Miss V, where we have a small guest that comes in and they get to create art. We talk about it. It becomes animated. They get to see their own work animated on screen. Oh, and then we sing a song and then we say goodbye. So <laughs> I'm really excited for it. I love that. Well, if you ever need a guest, you know where to reach out. Oh, uh, listen, you're already on the roster. Because I will gladly come do art. And I got to tell you You are you already all, on the roster. Yes. Talk about yes. do-overs. This lady <laughs> has given me an artistic do-over. Um, I have been doing her Zoom art classes. And it is so much fun to discover that the girl who thought she couldn't do art can create. And yeah. I have been having so much fun with you, Vanessa. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. When Koi, my sister Koi, and I came up with this class, I told her, I said, I want to give people back what's been taken from them with life. Just, you know, the first time, Diane, I think you hear somebody in school when you're drawing and you're doing the best you can and you're already doubting yourself and they go, oh, that's ugly. It does something to your mm -hmm. spirit. It does something to your soul, your emotions, you know, and you begin to doubt everything after that. You know, it's, it's, I watch the reaction of children and sometimes I see them do this where they, you know, kind of protect their work. Yep. And it is, I wanted to create a space where adults could come who have had maybe that same moment and it's stuck with you and now you're 40 and it's still in there or you're 60 and it's still in there. I'm here to help you get rid of it so that you can move forward and do whatever it is that you put your mind to. If that is, I want to travel and everybody say, well, what? Yeah, what? It's none of your business. This is not your dream. This is mine. Yep. And we have to really be careful, even who we share our dreams with. So when we have this common collage, you get to express yourself in a way that is 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 freeing. We it do really a meditation. Is. Yeah, we do a meditation. And then we do some collage. And collage is, is I, I call it the laxative to blocked anything. If you're blocked emotionally. If you're blocked with your vision, maybe you're trying to, you know, I'm trying to start a business and I don't even know where to start from or whatever. This, this is going to help you ripping paper, tearing paper, cutting paper, pasting it down. It doesn't have to be a beautiful picture. It just has to be a beautiful moment of you being calm and relaxed because when you are, you can start figuring out what it is that you need to do. And that's what I'm here to do. That's what we're here to do is to help you find your way through art. I love it. So Miss V, in all your uh, spare time, are you taking on life coaching people as well? <laughs> My sister said the same thing to me the other day, but I, I will tell you, Diane, the tears that have fallen from our eyes with women that have come on, because it's mostly women, but I wanna do men and children as well. Of course. But um, I had some women that came on and one woman said, this is my safe place. And it just brought tears to my eyes. She said, I work hard during the week. And she said, whenever you have this common collage, I will be there. She said, because this is where I get to breathe. I get to be and not be judged. And that was everything to me because that's exactly what I wanted it to be. A safe place where you can yeah. create and not, you, you shake off the judgment and pack it under. And you rise above, you know? So it, it's good to see people slinging paint or a magic marker or a pen yep. and not even really thinking about it. Just, you know, because when you draw, it becomes meditative. It does. And so, it's a beautiful, safe place. And what you've done is you've created a beloved community where yeah. you've got people of all races and all ages and intergenerationally working together. Isn't that awesome? It's oh beautiful. So I love it. I highly recommend for those who are listening, if you need that break, 
Follow Vanessa on Facebook, pay attention to her Instagram, and when you get a chance to sign up for this class, do it. It's going to be the best couple hours of your week. Absolutely. <laughs> well, that feels like it's almost a good place to um, pause this, but I do want to ask before we go, are there any other new projects on the horizon, things that are bringing you joy? Oh my gosh. Uh, right, right now, honestly, dreaming, you know, um, I, I don't mind telling your audience, I was this person who slept with the TV on for a long time, many years. And um, I did it, and I, I want to be honest with your, your, you and your guests and tell you, I had a fear of the dark. I really did. I had a staunch, very big fear. Uh, my aunts, uh, my family is from Low Country, South Carolina, and my aunts are Gullah Geechee. And they would tell these stories about the boo hag. And the boo hag would come and she would ride you. And what actually would happen is I would end up with sleep paralysis. And it was scary. It was so, so scary. And um, they would tell us these stories every night. And every night I had sleep paralysis. And so I would beg for them, please leave on the light. Don't turn off the light. I'm 61. Time to turn off the light. And I, and I wasn't dreaming. And you can't dream when the blue light is constantly there. And so I had to turn it off. And so now I'm just reclaiming a whole bunch of things, Diane. I am walking in the grass, uh, standing in the sunshine sometimes, nice. crying, just listening to birds, hugging trees. And I know people, she's a tree hugger. Yes, I am a tree hugger. I yes, am I too. Am. There's nothing wrong with that. We There's need nothing wrong huggers. with it. And it's very, very healing, people. Don't sleep on it. And even down to taking off your shoes and walking in the grass. Absolutely. It's Body grounding. Meditation. The Buddhists yes. do it all the time. And I got to say, it's a powerful practice. It's a powerful practice. And so just really taking the time to do that and then drawing afterwards. Yes. It is It is the most fabulous, healing, miraculous thing I've ever done. I've never been this grounded before, ever. Well, so, I love the happiness and joy that's radiating off of you. You clearly are living off or living up to Shake It Off. And I'm going to drop links to your original podcast, to your website, to all your social media so that folks can follow you. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming back to the Adventures in Learning podcast. I always like getting to catch up with you. I love you. Thank you I so much. I love you too.